up guys, Saf here on Super Saf TV and in this video we're going to be talking about the Huawei P40 Pro. Big thanks to Huawei for partnering with me for this video. Now I've been using this for just over a week now and although this isn't going to be a full review, that will come in about a month. I can tell you about my experience, especially how it's been living without Google Play services. So initially let's talk about the build and design. I have to say, this is currently one of my favorite looking smartphones right now. Huawei is known for their really unique designs and they were the ones that introduced these gradient finishes which were beautiful. This year, I absolutely love the silver frost color. There are some other color options available as well, but what I really like about this is the fact that it's got a matte finish and it does have that gradient and depending on how the light hits it, it gives it a very unique look. And the matte finish also means that you don't get as many fingerprints. So I'm really, really liking this design. It is IP68 water and dust resistant as well. And then we've got this camera module. It is a larger camera module compared to what we've seen previously, but it's not too big and it is placed towards the right-hand side of the device. The reason for that is this device is intended to be used in landscape mode when taking pictures and a lot of it is centered around photography. So let's talk about these cameras. So as expected, we do have multiple cameras on here which cover all bases. We've got a primary camera, we've got an ultra wide camera, we've got a periscope zoom camera, as well as a time of flight camera for depth information. Now the primary camera is a 50 megapixel camera. It's actually a really large sensor size. I believe it's one of the largest on the market. It's one over 1.28 inches. And that means a couple of things. Firstly, it's gonna be able to capture a lot more light. But secondly, it does give you a very natural depth of field. So this is without using any kind of portrait mode. You still get a really nice fall off of the focus, which I think looks really good. And the sensor is also an RYYB sensor, not RGB like we traditionally see. Now what this allows is more light to be captured. So it's around 40% more light and this does perform really, really well. Now what's interesting is this year, Huawei are also using this RYYB sensor type for the periscope zoom camera. So this is gonna allow more light for the zoom photos as well. We've got 12 megapixels, five times optical zoom, 10 times hybrid zoom, but you can get much more digital zoom. So if you do wanna take pictures of the moon, you can do that here on the P40 Pro. Huawei were one of the first to introduce periscope zoom technology, and this has now been improved here on the P40 Pro, and the results are really, really good. We then have an ultra wide camera, which has roughly about an 18 millimeter angle of view, and it's gonna allow you to get a lot more into your shot. My only feedback on this one would be that I would have liked it to be a little bit wider, but nevertheless, it's really, really good. And then we've got the time of flight sensor, which is gonna capture depth information for your portrait shots. And as you can see from this example, it does do a really good job for edge detection. It's also got the areas in between my arms, which uh, some other devices do struggle with. Now, I know you guys wanna see a super SAS style camera comparison of the P40 Pro. But because of the current lockdown situation, I've not been able to go out and do a proper test. I'll try to do that once things calm down a little bit and I can go out and do a proper camera comparison. But for the time being, I'm really liking the P40 Pro cameras, especially the front facing cameras. So at the front, we do have this pill shaped cutout, which has two cameras. We've got the front facing camera and we've also got a depth sensor. And genuinely speaking, that depth sensor really does help when it comes to portraits. Edge detection is definitely on point. And I would go as far as saying that this has one of my favorite front facing cameras out there. Now you guys may have heard me as well as lots of other YouTubers say before that Huawei devices can sometimes have a bit of skin softening, a bit of a beauty mode. And this is something that I have fed back to Huawei over time. And they have definitely taken this feedback on board now, when you actually fire up the front facing camera for the first time, it's gonna ask you, do you want to have beauty mode on or off? Of course, I put it off straight away. Now, details are very sharp, colors are very accurate and true to life, and I really like this front facing camera. Of course, if you do want, you can switch on that beauty mode, that is entirely up to you. Now, within this pill shape cutout, there's also some sensors for the face unlock. And face unlock on here is so, so fast. 
It's so fast that I've not actually had a chance to really test the in-display fingerprint scanner much, which is also here. So you have that option there, which is really nice to have. It's also faster and it does have a slightly larger area compared to last year. So I really like that you've got both of these options compared to just a single option that you have on many of the devices. Now let's talk about this display. So you'll notice that it's curved not only from the left and the right, but also from the top and the bottom. This is what, what we are calling an overflow display. And it's uh, kind of trying to replicate when a glass of water is filled right to the top and it's just about to drip over the sides. And it does look really, really good. Now I know not everybody's a fan of curved displays, but it's more so the glass that's curved rather than the display itself. So I've not really had any issues in terms of palm rejection. Now, one thing that I did find was that part of the keys towards the bottom corners were covered by the edges of the display, but this was easily resolved by just repositioning the keyboard slightly higher. Now the display itself is 6.58 inches. It's an OLED display with a 90 Hertz refresh rate. The resolution is 2640 by 1200, and it's a really good balance in my opinion, based on resolution and the refresh rate. It's smooth, it's sharp, colors are vibrant, viewing angles are really, really good as well. Now, there are other devices which do have higher resolution and higher refresh rates, but some of them can only do the higher refresh rates at a lower resolution. In my opinion, this is a good balance. And I think there's a good reason why while we have gone with the 90 Hertz and this resolution, and that is battery life. This has really, really good battery life. Uh, I've been using it every day and I've had no problems in terms of getting it through the day. Can't really give you my full screen on time as yet because I've mostly been using it at home because of the lockdown. Once I do get a chance to go out and about and test it out properly, I can give you more of an idea of screen on time. But I'm very, very confident that this is gonna last pretty much anybody all day long. And you do get the 40 watt supercharger out of the box, which is very, very fast. And I really like that this is included out of the box. Lots of other devices come with an 18 watt charger out of the box, so this is twice as fast. But for me, what's most important and something that I've really liked using the P40 Pro is the 27 watt fast wireless charging. So this is some of the fastest wireless charging in the market. Lots of other devices out there usually come with around 7.5 watts. That's kind of the average right now. So the P40 Pro has triple that, more than triple that actually. And it's so, so useful. I actually don't leave this to charge overnight anymore. I kind of wake up, leave it on the fast charger, get ready and everything. And before I know it, it's already fully charged. So I am really liking that wireless charger. I definitely recommend picking it up. It is sold separately, but that 27 watt charger is so, so worth it. Now internally, this is powered by the Kirin 990 5G chipset. It's an integrated chipset, so 5G is on board. And although you might be like me and not have 5G enabled in your area, it does mean that whenever 5G does come, then you're gonna be able to get on right away. It supports both standalone as well as non-standalone. You've got eight gigabytes of RAM with 256 gigabytes of storage. Uh, storage has been absolutely fine for me. You can also expand the storage with a nano memory card. Now this is a Huawei nano memory card, but having the option there is nice to have. I don't think most people will need it. Performance wise, this thing has been absolutely fine. You guys probably already know about the Kirin 990, a very capable chipset, and I've been playing lots of games on here and they run absolutely fine. Now for the speaker, there is a single bottom firing speaker. Now I would have preferred stereo speakers, but this bottom firing speaker is actually quite good and it does get quite loud too. And at the top, we do have an IR blaster, something which we don't really see much of these days. I'm personally not somebody who uses an IR blaster much, but you know, if you do need to control your TV and things like that, then you do have this option here, which is always nice to have. Now let's talk about the software. So this does have Android 10 with EMUI 10.1 on top. And as mentioned, it does not have Google Play services. So how has my experience been without Google Play services? Well, while it's not perfect, it's still very usable and you can get most of your favorite apps. Right, so there is the Huawei app gallery now, and this is something that Huawei have invested a lot in and are continuing investing a lot in. 
And it does have lots of popular apps such as Snapchat, Telegram, as well as TikTok, lots of others which you can just download directly from the Huawei App Gallery. Now, right now, not all apps are on there, but more are coming with time. Other apps which are not directly on the gallery, you do get links to for the APKs, such as with Facebook, you can just search for it on the Huawei App Gallery. It's gonna give you the official link to the APK. You can go ahead and download and install that. There are also lots of other third-party app stores, which I'm sure you know about, and you can go ahead and use those too. But personally, what I did use on my P40 Pro was the phone clone app. Now, this is something that comes out of the box with the Huawei P40 Pro, and you just have to install it on your old device, and then it transfers most of your apps that are compatible on to the P40 Pro. So I managed to get pretty much everything that I need on here. I've got Instagram, Facebook Pages Manager, Facebook Messenger, Outlook, Spotify, all of these things are on here and they work absolutely fine. But of course, you're not gonna be able to get Google Play services on here. Now, you can, however, access all of the regular Google apps via the browser. For me personally, the big thing is YouTube, of course. If you're watching this video on YouTube, I am a YouTuber, so YouTube is an app that's very, very important to me. And one shortcut that I picked up from my buddy David Kogan, The Unlocker, was to actually add shortcuts to different web pages onto your home screen. So you can see that I've actually got the YouTube logo here on the home screen. And whenever I tap that, what it actually does is it opens the YouTube website in the browser. And the YouTube website is actually quite good in browser form. I can still speed up videos in two times because I've got a very short attention span. I can still select different resolutions. And the browser also has a forced dark mode, so I can make YouTube dark as well. So it does work and I can still consume the content that I was consuming before here on YouTube. And that is my one week with the Huawei P40 Pro. I'm gonna carry on using it and I'm gonna be doing lots more content with it. Uh, if there's anything in particular that you'd like me to cover with this, then let me know in the comments below. Also let me know what you think of the Huawei P40 Pro. Now, if you're interested in finding out more about the P40 Pro or you wanna pick this up, I'll be leaving a link in the description below. Also in the description below will be a link to the Huawei community if you want some hints and tips on using the Huawei P40 Pro. If you wanna see more content like this, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do hit that thumbs up button for me. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV. And I'll see you next time. Yes, this is my kitchen. I thought I'd mix it up while I'm sitting at home. You know what I mean? Why not?